You are a radiation oncologist of international repute. You've got a lot of experience at top centres in the States. You're in Vienna for the International Atomic Energy Association that concerns itself very much with health-related issues and cancer. Can you tell me what you've been talking about right here in Istanbul about developing cancer care? So one of the things that we, we, we're talking about partnerships and the importance of partnerships and um, also one of the main things we were talking about is how to evaluate what a country needs through specific impact missions, et cetera. And we were very active in that area. We did have a mission in Peru uh, a few years back and this gives guidance. Um, first of all, it evaluates the situation, what's, what's available on the ground. Then it gives guidance later on in terms of planning for the future. What, in fact, were you doing in Peru and, and, and what did you find as, as an example of what, what you're so talking about? The IAA was there as part of an impact mission initially uh, to, to assess the situation in terms of cancer control on the ground. And we do it in conjunction with, the, as I said, the WHO and IARC. Um, and we each, each group has its own, or each agency has its own area of expertise. Ours is mainly radiation medicine and, radi and diagnosis, so for example, CT scans, PET scans, things like that. And then there's uh, prevention. There's also all the way from the beginning to the palliative care, so from prevention to palliative care. Of course, in cancer care, the use of known treatment methods without using any vastly expensive new approaches, if you actually implement that, you get a huge bonus, don't you? Yes, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for prevention, um, for example, of, of different cancers that could be a, of great benefit, but then we also have to think of the cancers that are already present or occurring in the population, and we need to provide good ways and interventions to treat them and cure them or palliate them. Right. I, I'm interested in finding out how you develop your partnerships to improve prevention, but first of all, the treatment. What are the big areas that need to be addressed globally in getting some of the basic treatments in there in each country? It's an excellent question. So uh, there's a, a wide variety of treatment techniques that we have to use and interventions. And we have to go and they all have to work together. So it's not if you get one type of treatment of only, then you ha it's, it's not going to work. You have to have the whole health system has to be comprehensive and, and, uh, and work well. For example, if you, ha if you have only, um, let's say, radiation therapy or chemotherapy services that are well established, but then you don't have proper diagnosis and pathology in labs, then you risk of making wrong diagnosis and everything will be based on the wrong uh, premise. So it's important to have the whole spectrum, hence the importance of um, work that we all work together. Um, the, uh, the WHO, IARC, and IEA has worked together um, through the UN Interagency Task Force and we have a joint program as well to try to promote this kind of comprehensive view and also include NGOs and others in some of the, these projects as well. So the whole group, we are a world community uh, against cancer and we have to work together as such. What sorts of priorities do you have in prevention and screening? So. Uh, prevention and screening, uh, the WHO is very active in that area. Um, our contribution is basically through uh, looking at nutritional issues related to prevention and also through a radiation-based uh, process so, um, or radiation-derived uh, process. So deuterium, for example, to assess the intervention pro programs within countries that are looking at, for example, preventing malnutrition or obesity or um, things like that. So that's the main part of the prevention. In terms of diagnosis, we have, we're very active in terms of um, you know, CT scans, PET scans, etc., to help uh, countries develop these um, products and at the same time, um, more importantly, to get good teaching and training, which is essential and safety. Now, if I live in, in any particular country, what can I be doing? We, we can obviously hope that there are some important bodies like your own that are taking care of everything, but how can the public and doctors get involved in all of this? I think it's important that we all get involved, uh, whether it's physicians through professional associations or NGOs, for example, or the general public is, is very effective in terms of intervening in, in, uh, with, with advocacy and uh, other, other things like that, and to increase awareness of specific diseases and signs and symptoms for early diagnosis. I think everyone has a role, and if we all play that role, we get more success stories.
So what's the bottom line take her message that you'd like people to remember in order to get involved? So I think um, many of us, unless we're touched by cancer, either we work in the cancer field or we have cancer ourselves or have family members that have cancer, we don't realize the need that's out there and what needs, and what needs to be done. So I would like people to get educated on this issue and try to, to, to be proactive and intervene so, so we can have less unnecessary cancer deaths. And the other thing is that's um, related to uh, policymakers and decision makers is radiation um, therapy in itself is a very important part. 50% of all cancer patients are getting radiation therapy. And the realization is the equipment may be expensive up front, but long term it's very cost effective because the machine will last 15 years and people will keep getting treated on the machine. And the more people you treat, the less expensive the cost is. So it's, 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 um, it's been found to be very cost effective. So we help people who are dealing with that kind of issue to determine you know, whether it's a good idea to start building a new center, for example, or the need for radiation therapy. So campaigning to get funding for radiotherapy equipment is campaigning well spent? Definitely. Definitely. There's a, there, it's very cost effective and more importantly, even in the palliative setting, it's very important. It can lessen dependence on opioids, lessen pain. So it's, it's definitely very important to have a good system. Mm.